Hello, and welcome to another video. In this video, we're playing some uh, High Lack D Focus Guardian. So what we're running is stimulated. Um, I wanted to run a different implant, but unfortunately it would have given me too much crit and not enough alacrity. So we're running stimulated instead. I did think about taking a second wind, but I decided to full send it and try to get some more critical from mastery and also just increase our base damage a little bit more. Uh, the 10% damage would have been really nice, but also even um, another tactical that I, or not tactical, but implant that I had in mind. Um, which I'll eventually make a video on, uh, but until we get there, uh, I'm not going to spoil that. Anyway, getting into this match, we're running the AoE uh, Enraged Crush. The reason why we're running that is to help with uh, just being able to burst our damage out faster. Since we are playing higher lacrity, we're able to uh, basically do things a little bit more f more frequently than other people. So obviously, we're going to have a lot of... Uh, a lot of extra global cooldowns over the course of the entire game and then we're also going to have reduced cooldown compared to like what we normally would not by much but you know eventually it'll start adding up pretty much the longer the game goes so with that in mind uh we're just trying to pop our enrage uh our enrage crash pretty much right away for extra bursts and then also gives us some aoe potential uh, i was thinking about taking the dot but I think overall, probably at least like even though I am taking pretty much no critical at all, uh, people still die pretty fast. Obviously, in this match, it's a little bit different because there's two Mercurials. But in most situations, people do still end up just dying really fast. So I don't really find it too worthwhile to run. And since we're already running a high alacrity, I feel like it's just going to be better uptime and just better use in general. It also means that like, uh, the CDR for critting uh, for combat focus slash enrage is also going to get some benefits when I'm actually in AoE. Uh, you can see the cooldown reduction kind of like happen in real time. But obviously, sometimes uh, it's not always going to line up because the tactical is a little wonky. Also, if you're curious, um, would I recommend this? Eh, it's really fun. Like uh, the flow. Like it feels really good. High Alacrity Fury has always felt good. But uh, when it comes to Rage, like High Alacrity Rage has always felt like way better than High Alacrity Fury. So if you're a fan of either one, I would probably recommend it because it's very enjoyable. However, do keep in mind you're still going to miss quite a bit because you have no accuracy and you can't afford accuracy. And you're also going to not crit that much either. Um, even if you do try to maximize your crit instead of your mastery, you're still not going to be in that good of a like, crit threshold. You'd be in a bit better one than I am because I'm going mostly mastery. Um, I would think like if you're going to try this build, I would probably go critical instead of mastery. Like, uh, unlike what I did, but it does mean that you're probably going to have to run second wind. So do keep that in mind because you're not going to be able to take double uh, crit implants. It'd be really nice if we could uh, have choice over like what kind of stats our implants had. That would make uh, a little bit more versatility for like builds. But anyway, getting into this, um, overall, my conclusion is it's not bad, but it's also not like amazing. So a lot of the critical that you get from one, your implant, so it's champion's precision, you get 20% when you pop in rage. Then you also get uh, some critical uh, hit chance and I think damage from using rage and burst if you take the talent, which I do. So that helps. So overall, it's not completely troll, but you do hit way less. Um, and also the critical hit damage uh, passive is really nice. We start getting into the point in the match where my team kind of just like doesn't come mid anymore. And the enemy team doesn't really care to hit the other people for a little bit. So I do try to take any chance I can to avoid just feeding in mid because there's just nobody on my team really wanting to contribute. So I take this opportunity to fight this, um, this mercenary that's trying to score. Uh, it would have been nice to win this match, but honestly, our team was just so heavily outmatched by their large pre -made. We weren't really able to like do much, and I don't really expect folks to want to deal with this, so I totally understand like their position. It would have been nicer if they continued to fight, but I totally understand. It's not that fun. And if you're not having fun, you know, you probably don't want to continue playing.
And also for anybody that's uh, curious, um, outside of just getting a CDR for your abilities, you also um, get the opportunity to have slightly more leaps, if that makes sense. Just, you're getting attacked, right? And it gives you CDR for your leap, but also at the same time, you do have a, a slightly lower cooldown. I think it's like a second, a whole second shaved off, or two seconds shaved off, which is pretty cool. Uh, so you are going to feel relatively mobile. And if you had second wind, it would be even more mobile. Now going into um, like a rotational flow, since you're running the Enrage Crush, you kind of want to prioritize just getting that off first. Uh, mostly just because it does it in AoE slow, which is nice. Then you can immediately line into uh, combat, focus into obliterate, into smash. That's typically like a simple, like easy way to do it, where you can just front load your damage as fast as possible if you're going to die really fast. However, an alternative method would be obviously opening with uh, combat focus and elite into raging burst, and then do um, obliterate for scratch into smash. Obviously, this doesn't give the double power to smash, but sometimes it might be better to have the double power to um, uh, raging burst or even like smash. It's really just judgment call, and obviously, if you don't have much time to do damage, you should probably just try to get things off as fast as you can, and optimally, I think, Pression to Raging Burst, um, not empowering that into uh, Obliterate slash Smash is usually better. Another thing to think about, like outside of uh, like the opener, rotationally, you can pretty much always ensure, unless you're like netted or like hindered in some way where you can't move, you can pretty much always to stack things, so it should be really a priority for the most part to double stack. Most of the time you will see me double stack after the opener, and it's really not that hard to do. It's just the opener that you will have one, one non-double empowered, because it's going to be very awkward to get it to double power, or double empowerment. Um, it's never a bad thing to only use one stack, but it is better overall to use two stacks. Just don't delay your rotation, or basically re delay your, I guess, vital abilities. The way uh, Fury and Rage works in general is that you get CDR for using your abilities, so the more you use your abilities, the more CDR you get, and the more rotational flow that you get. And whenever you hold off on abilities or try to get things too perfect, you're just losing damage overall. And then obviously you are like micromanaging uh, force crush and combat focus slash enrage like a uh, destruction proc. So that's basically like the uh, little white nuclear like icon on my buffs. Um, that's what destruction is. Basically you're kind of like micromanaging that in between your raging bursts. Obviously you don't want to overlap them. Sometimes it's going to happen and sometimes it might be okay too because you're going to get a reset anyway. Uh, let's say you already have a uh, destruction proc, but you need your second stack, and this guy's only going to survive for one more hit, and you're about to get out of combat too. Uh, it'd be completely justifiable to just overlap there. Because you'll be able to get a bigger final blow, in which, you know, that's damage out of thin air. And you're going to get a reset anyway, so next uh, combat, you know, engagement, you're going to be able to leap and combat focus once again. Uh, this is why Rage and Focus in general is very good at stomping pugs. So like if you're ever against uh, a team that's not very good or you have like a pre-made or something like that, Rage and Fury are like kings. Or not Fury, but Rage and uh, Focus. Like kings are just completely stomping people. And it's mainly because of the uh, the CC immunity and on top of that just having damage reduction on leap now, which is really nice. And then just the fact that those abilities reset when they get out of combat. So when people do inevitably die, which they'll probably be dying a lot if they get enrolled, um, it just basically completely resets their entire burst and their CC immunity and their DR. So it becomes really brutal, or brutal to deal with. Now the the one nice thing obviously about dealing with rage is that it's a very cleavable spec. 
if you play something like pyro or lethality um obviously rage will hurt a lot but when it comes to like having actual team supports and other people that taunt pyro and lethality do an excellent job at cleaving them down including even uh vengeance uh since they are prone to needing to be in melee and if there's a lot of them um, they're not like super tanky so you're going to be able to cleave like a lot on them which is pretty nice anyways um yeah we're kind of just going through and playing all the specs that I think would be pretty fun with high alacrity. And if you guys want to see more, um, stay tuned. Other than that, I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day.